Hi guys, and today I'll be playing I'm a Copycat. The story between Lucy and the clown, a pair that are very much in love. Poor Lucy has problems with her memory, but the clown strives to look after her and keep her safe. Seems that simply nothing can disturb their peaceful, perfect lives together. For now, anyways. Wait, sweetheart. This game is not suitable for sensitive viewers. Would you like to see the content only before playing, just to be on the safe side? Eh. Do you want to see the content worry? Nah, I'm pretty good. Very well, but do take care of yourself, my love. It is a psycho psychological horror game after all. It's dark, quiet, quite peaceful. Dreamless sleep. My curtains. You must have already opened them for me. The sky looks so pretty today. Well, time to get up. My glasses. He says I can't see very well without them. I should get dressed, but my pajamas are so comfy. Oh, I smell eggs. Time for breakfast. The clown, good morning. Lucy, you're already up? This is a pleasant surprise. I just finished making breakfast. We're having omelets. Aw, we didn't have to make you breakfast, but thank you so much. He sat down and he was eager to feed me some of the omelet himself. It may seem odd, but I think it's really cute. You put in so much effort into making the omelet for me, but... I just wanted to make a bowl of cereal. Lucky jewels or fruit squares. Do you like it? Can't say no to that face. It's really good. That's great. I'm so glad. I can make more tomorrow. Yay! I went to the fridge to get some apple juice. I don't have the heart to tell him, but he's been so sweet to me ever since the car accident. Enough thinking about that. Yummy apple pot about apple juice. I sat down at the table. The clown was clearing his and my juice dishes. He seemed to be hurriedly scrubbing both plates, trying to get it done as fast as he can. Do you need any help? No, 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 sweetie. I got this. I ignored him and crept up behind him, hugging him from behind. For grabbing the plate he had just washed and beginning to dry the plate. Oh, well, thank you, sweetie. Don't mention it. I finished drying the plate and went to put it away in the cupboard, but I slipped on the tile to the floor, dropping the plate. I heard the sharp sounds of it smashing to pieces. I successfully maintained my balance, huffing in annoyance, and embarrassment that the clown saw that. I quickly bent down to clean up the remains of the plate. Ow. I felt a sharp sting. Try with the broken plate I cut my finger. Lucy, let me see that. My hand was in his before I could even could see the cut. He pulled me over to the drawers, pulling out some bandages, and hastily began to wrap my cut. Uh, thank you, honey. My cheeks flushed. It felt so weird to use the pet names, but the clown uses them all the time and they are so endearing to me. Why are you laughing? You're too cute, sweetheart. He gave me my bandaged finger a small kiss. I love you, Lucy. I love you too. We cleaned up the mess and I returned to my bedroom to get dressed. The clown told me that I moved in not long before the car accident. I could tell he poured his heart into decorating it, and I love every inch of it. My bed covers are cyan blue, adorned with pink, cute pink hearts. A teddy bear holding a small red heart is sat right next to beside my pillow. The clown gave it to me for Valentine's Day last year. I wish I remembered it because I love to color that petty whenever I can't sleep. I named him Bruce. Just above my bed is a framed photo of the clown and I at prom. Since we met at we were high school sweethearts, for some reason my hair was blonde. Meh, must have dyed it. I opened my drawers and pulled out my favorite outfit. A blue button-up t-shirt with denim shorts and high thigh high high stockings. Oh, and my navy hoodie. The clown suggested I wear it. He says I'm always freezing to the touch, but I don't really feel it. I purposely left my hoodie down before I pull my shoulders. All done. The clown was seated on the couch. He looked up as he heard me entering and stood up. Not quite done yet. Hmm? What do you mean? You forgot this. He pulled out one of my hairpins out from his pocket. Here, let me just... He trailed off as he began to tuck some of my hair back to keep in place with the clip. I smiled. It's small things that he does that make him so sweet. Thank you. No worries. 
I turned around to retrieve my glass of apple juice I left on the kitchen table, I had a little trouble navigating the room. See, there's a small staircase from the living room that goes in the through the doorway to the kitchen. With my sight problems, I run the risk of falling and pressing my face on the tiles. Don't need to come worry about me again today, that's for sure. Huh, <sighs> aw, you alright, darling? Uh, yes, absolutely positively. Is this the stuff? Like he's a controlling partner. That's why I get that's the vibe I get from him and the description of the game, basically. Anything you want to do today? Crumbs, I'm so lost in thought. I had no mentor. Uh, nothing really. Yourself? Uh, nothing either, to be honest. But maybe we could tell. Oh, Freeman. Just a moment, honey. You have to answer a call. My glasses slipped down my, my nose as I peered around. to worry about. Alright, but I'll miss you. Your sad not fall off, silly. Oh yeah, he's right. I put your hoodie on properly. He took my hoodie up over my shoulders and zipped it up. I patted and stuck my tongue out. No fair, it's too hot. And your hands are like ice, sweetheart. I sighed and kept the hoodie the right way he adjusted it. It wasn't super thoughts slip away as I drift off to sleep. That night, I had a dream. It was a dream I frequently had. I even had it now from time to time, but not as much. I could hear voices. I only recognize one voice, Nikon. Will she be okay when she wakes up? Muffled, unfamiliar voices respond. What about her memories? Will she know who I am? Muffled voices respond again. My head was throbbing as my vision became clearer. The clan was holding me, his eyes on me. He gently tilted my head up to look at him. Lucy, oh thank god you're awake. How are you feeling? L Lucy? Who's that? Who are you? I woke up to my curtains still closed. Did I wake up early? I look over at my clock. It's nearly 1pm. I jumped out of my bed and ran into the hallway. And my eyes darted around trying to find the clan. I must have got off of groceries and I never got to kiss him goodbye. Hmm, huh? Sweetheart, are you awake? Huh? He entered the clan's room when he was still in bed. The clan, are you alright? I rushed my hand along his forehead. He was burning up with a fever. He shivered under my touch and I quickly retracted my hand. Sorry. Don't apologize, darling, but 
I don't think I'll be able to make breakfast today. I'm gonna do something. Before he could respond, I dashed out of his room to make some breakfast. Then I realized, wait, I don't remember how to cook. Eh, it, look, it looks edible. Oh, sweetheart. I'm so sorry. I kept my eyes on the bacon too long and I nearly forgot about the toast. By the time the toast was done, the achy bacon was burning. And I was worried I was going to burn the eggs too. And I'm, I'm so sorry. Huh, well, I was going to say this is a great job for someone recovering from amnesia, but I like my food a little overcooked. I patted my hair and began to eat the food I made. I'm surprised he managed to stomach it. I'll get you something for the fever. I quickly left his room, went to the bathroom to search for a cloth. I opened one of the covers and found some neatly folded next to these things. After returning from the hospital, the clown has stocked up on all these weird pad things. Said they were for my time of the month, but it's been nearly three months. Strange. Ugh. I shrugged it off and grabbed the cloth and began to soak it under some cold water and brought it into the crayon. How did you stomach it? I liked it, thank you. I blushed. I could tell he was saying that just to make me feel better, but it meant a lot regardless. Placed the cloth on his head and rubbed his hair. I think I might go to sleep for a while. I need to be better by tomorrow. Of course, have all the rest you need. After leaving the room, I decided to make my own breakfast. Lucky jewels it is. Pulled out a box from the cupboard, but all that there was in there was cereal dust. Dang it. I reached up to a small shelf above the sink to grab the bread. Maybe some more toast? Maybe with some chocolate spread? Ugh. One side of the shelf decided to fall, leaving the entire shelf dangling. I caught the bread just in time. I remember that the con wouldn't be able to get groceries, let alone buy a screwdriver. Maybe. No, he said not to. But. No. And again, maybe. Clan did always say he loves my bravery. Yeah, I can do it. Skipped into my room, throwing on my clothes, ran back to the kitchen and grabbed some money from the clan's wallet. He was gonna buy groceries with it anyways. Here's a cart with Tony. Before I could talk myself out of it, I found the keys to the front door and walked outside. Oh. This was different from looking out the window. The front yard was even messier than the back. I walked slowly through the yard and noticed the car. The clan told me that we were in a car accident. I was driving and the impact drove my head forward, knocking me out and giving me amnesia. The man said much about rescuing me, but I liked him that he scooped me up and carried me out like Prince, Prince Charming. Enough daydreaming, groceries. This place is lovely. Everything's so bright and colorful. Oh, the pharmacy. That is where the clan works. And the boutique. What's that? Oh my god. Looked into the window of one of the shops. I saw cupcakes. Pretty multicolored cupcakes. They look so delectable. Aww, I hope I can come back here sometime soon. Do you want the clowns at work? Tee <laughs> Note to self, go to the bakery. Oh, the supermarket. I picked up the basic things I remember the clown bringing home from other trips to the supermarket. I picked up some fresh box of lucky jewels. During the adventure exploring this place, I felt myself alive with someone. Ah! Crap, sorry, sorry. The glasses slipped off my nose and I looked over at who crashed into me. I wonder if she looked very familiar like the girl I see in the mirror every morning. Wait. Um, bye! She was gone before I could say anything. Strange. I brushed it off and looked to check how much I had in the shopping cart. Oh, I have enough to buy another item. What should I get? Screwdriver, flowers, pen. Huh. I feel like this is kind of a really random assortment. Why don't we just get a screwdriver? I mean, might as well. Perfect. The user will fix the shelf before the clan even wakes up. I hurry to the checkout and pay for everything. Once I returned home, I began to work on the shelf. Oh. I did hurt my fingers a few times though, however, the damage wasn't too bad. You drilled a hole through your hand. What? It's not bleeding. It should be fine. How do you do that? Finally had my bowl of lucky jewels and toasted chocolate spread. Yummy. It was yummy. I cleaned, I cleaned them up and cleaned up my mess before checking to see how the clown was doing. Clown, how are you feeling? 
Still a little lightheaded, but better. Thank you for asking, sweetheart. I certainly look better. Plant space, however. What happened to your hand? It's been pierced by something. Huh? Oh, um. I didn't want the Khan to know I went outside without asking him. Well, I didn't mean, well, I mean have a leisure, but. But I couldn't think of a lie that would be believable. I was too nervous. I wiped my eyes, deferred my eyebrows, and feigned in confusion. Oh, what happened to my hand? You don't know? All I did was make breakfast and eat breakfast unless I pressed my hand on the side of the table or something. I don't think the corner of the table was caused such an open wound on your hand. Crumbs may have been lightheaded, but he wasn't gullible. I teared up. I betrayed his trust, and now he's going to be mad at me. Sweetheart, what's the matter? I wasn't ready to give up. I don't know what's going on in my hand. Do you think it'll be alright? Khan gave me a reassuring smile. Well, it doesn't seem to be bleeding, so I suppose it'll be alright. I took my hand and kissed the pierced mark marking in my palm. I took a slow, deep breath, a sigh of relief. He seemed to drop the topic after that. He chatted to me for the rest of the day from his bed. I went to my own room that night and went to sleep. I had another dream. A horrible dream. Darling, please slow down. This is far beyond the speed limit. No one else is around. This should be fine, right? We can never be too sure, but... I trust you, my sweetheart. Faulty Khan placed his hand on mine. I couldn't help but turn my gaze to him. No. No, 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 no. I, I woke up in a fright. It was still late at night. Huh, maybe it was maybe he's not the bad guy I made him out to be. Maybe it was her. I don't know, honestly. Tears were running down my face. I often cried if I had a nightmare. I suppose it was a memory, but it felt so horrific. It didn't feel real. I got out of my bed and listened against the clan's door. I couldn't hear anything. He's still asleep. Good. I crept over to the living room and looked through the window at the front yard. Car. I knew I crashed a car, but remembering it, seeing the marks of my irresponsibility so vividly, I felt like something was pulling on my insides, pulling on them violently like they wanted me to be sick. Guilt. Shame. Everything faded to black again, but I had no more dreams. Lucy? Woke up to the clan standing over me by the window. What are you doing here? It's cold. He brushed his hand along my hair and I looked down, shamefully. Oh. Probably thought my head lowering was a sign of a request for more affection. I was leaning down to kiss my head. Are you sad that I'm going to work today? Of course I was, but that wasn't why I was here. But he didn't need to know that. Uh, yes, I wanted to sleep here in case I slept in. I wouldn't be able to say goodbye. I hugged him tightly, hiding my face in his chest. Khan stroked my hair and whispered words I didn't understand. Too hushed. You see, even if you're not awake, I'll still kiss you goodbye. Promise? I promise. So no more sleeping on the windowsill, understood? Pinch my nose gently, arising a small quantity of laughter from me. Understood. We left around 9 a.m. This was my first time in the house alone for so long since the crash. So what to do now? Hey Donna, what if my friend sees me? If you wear your hood, he won't recognize you. So what if he founds out? Just because you guys went out together before. The clan trusts me to stay home. You're a grown-up though. You should prove that you can manage yourself. Besides, don't you want to go to the baraka barakiri? I want to go to the barakiri. So will you do it? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Lucy I know. Thank you, Mr. Baraki Man. You're welcome, Lucy. And the old man adjusted his glasses and smiled sweetly. You don't mind me asking, how have you been lately? Like Your father told me about that breakup of yours. Oh, so you did break. He was lying. Break up? Yes, yes. I remember your father told me you had to wrestle past that evil man to always get your essentials. Oh, I was right. He was evil. And I told him he never tried to speak to you again. You shoot him. I can't imagine how scary it must have been. I was saying good riddance. But I left the person to talk. How's it? I... Doors were open and I saw the wrong girl again.
love her hair. Yeah, I like it too. I went home with the cupcakes, very confused by the event. Don't you think that was rather odd? Just a variety story, I mean. No, I'm probably confused elderly talk. I, I suppose. When we finally did get home, Bruce and I had a tea party with the cupcakes. Time flew by, barely noticed it when the car locked at 5 p.m. Home, sweetheart. I had another dream. I saw the blonde girl and someone that looked like the clown. They were fighting. Hey, where do you think you're going? Leaving. Leaving? But but the car. I have legs. I'll walk. She stormed past the clown and the copycat and went into my room. She stuffed her bag with some clothes in the wallet along with other essentials. Including a box cutter. She then began to make her way to the front door. The clown's clone tried to take her hand. She slapped it away and continued to walk. Clan's double looked distraught. He tried to reach to hold her. I heard a slashing sound from the box cutter. Blood trickled down the clan's look-alike cheeks. Tears rolling up in his widened eyes. Her eyes, they were red with fury, shimmering from what I can assume were tears. My sweetheart, you know no matter where you go, I'll always keep searching for you. And if you do, my father's gun will always be waiting for you. She snarled and slammed the door, leaving the clown's double behind. My, my sweetheart, my darling, my... Tears streamed down his face. I woke up before he said anything else. Clown, I wonder what happened between these two. Very violent, that's for sure. I checked the clock. 7 a.m., he's still home. I got up and dragged myself to the kitchen. Oh, good morning, sweetheart. Hi. How did my darling sleep? Not very good. I had a bad dream. Aw, oh, my poor Lucy. He quickly pulled me into a hug. I shut my eyes and hugged back. It was just a dream. I'm here now. Hearing that made me feel reassured that he was there for me. He loved me. I loved him. What? Again? Yeah, it was very fun yesterday. But I'm not sure. You need to get your mind off that dream. Maybe you could try and get a new look. Are you trying to imply that I'm ugly? Well, you certainly don't have that lady's pretty blonde curls. Oh, so now you're gonna compare me to other women? We're on a we're in a committed friendship, Bruce. <laughs> then again, I both look really good blonde. Exactly. But the clown will notice if I dyed my hair. True, but you look so pretty that he'd forget about it. Bruce, you're a genius. Bruce and I bought some blonde hair dye from the supermarket. Skimming through the instructions, I was very excited to try this new look. I looked it up and saw the blonde lady again. She was walking along with her friend. I overheard them chatting about useless things such as a meetup at the park or visiting some new restaurant. So next week, I'll meet you there after my run at 8. Does that work? Do we have to go through there? Go there, there, go. I'm assuming the food is super spicy. God, I love spicy food. Her friend comically whined and held her arm. The blonde lady laughed, rubbed her hair before making her way to the checkout. Who goes for a run in the park so late? I don't know, kind of weirdos. I know. I made her way back home with another bag of Mr. B Barakey's baked goods, and I began my transformation. It went terribly. <sighs> what have I done? I look awful. Oof. How am I going to face the clown looking like this? Tell him it was mustard. Bruce, you're not helping. I groaned and tossed him on the ground, his lifeless beady eyes gazing at the ceiling. 
I look back in the mirror and whimpered, die still staining my hands. How ridiculous. My silly plan was definitely not going to work. There was no going back on it for a few weeks. When 5 p.m. hit, Kayan arrived home. Lucy, I'm home. I didn't reply, I just wanted to hide in the bathroom and cry. Sweetheart? Search the house for me, including the bathroom. I hid behind the shower curtains, but... Darling, what have you done to yourself? I... I tried some dye I found in the cupboard. Clown's expression changed, changed in a way I never saw before. His eyes turned dark and cold. He pursed his lips and clicks his tongue. Alright, darling, let's pretend I'm stupid. Let's pretend I didn't notice that you've been sneaking out without my permission. You know, I really thought I'd give you a chance. You weren't causing any harm. But you seem to have inherited her rebellious streak. Her? Was he talking about? He grabbed me roughly by the shoulder and pulled me into my room. What are you doing? He threw me in and slammed the door. Man, I knew this guy was shit. I knew it. First time out. He sounded so smug, it wasn't like him. Wait, let me out, please, the clan. I started bawling and banging on the door. I could sense him on the other side, I could feel the sadistic smirk. No can do, Lucy. You're not getting out of there until all that dye is gone. But that'll be so long. I can't wait that long, please, I'm sorry. And you have plenty of time to think about how sorry you are. I gave too many chances before. Not making that mistake again, nipping it in the bud. Oh my god, that's an asshole. That is a controlling asshole. I looked in my mirror. My roots were starting to grow out. It felt like an eternity. Crossed the door and knocked neatly. Yes, I'm hungry. I heard him walking away to get some food. Tossed in a small cracker. I see where they were come of it. I knocked again. What? My roots are finally showing. About time. Yeah, about time. Roots wasn't enough to keep me company. I had what I assumed were the voices in my head. Taunt me, toying with me. They told me they had names. Simon and Paige. They sounded like an old married couple. Snickums. This is a little harsh, is it not? No hush, dearie. I made it, and the boy is doing all... Doing what with it all? I didn't put hours on work into sculpting it for enough it not to do anything. Touché. But anyways, you there. Have you thought that maybe it's the blonde chick's fault? What? Think about it. If it weren't for her being so mean to your boy toy, he might have locked you in here for doing such a terrible dye job by comparison. Honey, maybe he's cheating on you with her and his guilty conscience is causing him to lock you in here so you never find out about it. His guilty conscience? Yeah. But dramatic. Oh, maybe she's an alien clone that's making herself a more appealing version of you, trying to steal his brains. Hey, that didn't happen, nor would it make any sense. You're mixing zombies and aliens up. Okay, fine. All I'm saying is, it wouldn't be fun to just kill her. What? What? He never took that screwdriver off you. Maybe if you end her life, maybe things will go back to normal. Normal? Mm-hmm. Well, I might let you out, and he'll take proper care of you again. Care? Yep, he'll love you. Love me? With all his heart. Use the window. Break it. It's 8 p.m. Maybe she's at the park. There she is. I have the screwdriver. There can only be one, correct? Only one. Only me. Good girl. Hey, what are you... Breaking news, body of young Lucy Miller was found in the local park last Saturday. Teen is a officer's daughter dead. Police suspect murder, suspect the murder, but the friend that found the weapon implies suicide by the victim herself. The body was found with a stab wound to the face, inflicted presumably by a screwdriver that was found carelessly hidden in a trash can away from the body. Family has suspicions of who the killer is, but no fingerprints bar the where the victim were found on any evidence. He was quiet. He pet my hair. Her blood helped cover some of the damage to my hair. Her marks on my skin didn't hurt. You weren't bleeding anyways. 
so it didn't matter. He loved me. Bad and not a copycat. Wait, so we're not real. We're a copy of that woman. Did he, I guess he didn't, did he make her? Okie dokie, so we're gonna choose a bouquet of, a bouquet of flowers. Why don't you bring the plant something nice? It might make him feel better for work tomorrow. Even though I have much prefer if he stayed home with me. Pay for all the groceries and all the flowers and rushed home. Crumbs, I should have gotten a screwdriver while I was out. Now we have a bowl of lucky jewels and toast with chocolate spread. Yummy! It was yummy. I finished up and cleaned up my mess before checking to see how the clam was doing. Clam, how are you feeling? Still a little lightheaded, but better. Thank you for asking, sweetheart. You know, there's the flowers in my hand. Lucy, what's this? Oh, okay, so I thought I would go and do the grocery shopping since you weren't feeling well. Well, it's all these pretty flowers that I thought you liked. I was trembling. I was scared you'd be angry for leaving without his permission. So much for being brave. The clan smiled at me sweetly. Oh, my darling, you're so thoughtful. He was happy? But, did you see anyone odd while you were out? Nope. No one giving you any weird looks? Not that I can recall. Oh, alright then. Just please make sure to ask me next time, okay? Okay. Promise me. He gave me a teasing smile. I set myself beside him on bed. I promise. I kissed his cheek. We spent the rest of the day together, placed the flowers in a vase next to his bed. When night fell, I didn't want to, want to leave. Clam? Yes. It's okay if I sleep beside you tonight. Clam blushes with smiles. Oh, well, this is new. Was it? Then of course you can, just put on your pajamas first. Clan? Hmm? What is it, sweetheart? I was wondering if maybe you could tell me how we first met. But I already tight but I already thought I told you though. He chuckled. I know that, but I wanna know the details. Was it love at first sight? Were we rivals? Did we help each other cheat on tests? All the details. Pretty please? The clan began to laugh. Alright, alright, Dolly, I'll tell you this excruciating the excruciating details. I snuggled up in the blankets. Like a child waiting to be told their favorite spirit tale for the fiftieth time. So, I went to the op to optician at five years, four months, two weeks, three days, twenty hours, fifty minutes, and twenty eight seconds of age, on the nineteenth of August in the year of not the boring details. The clan burst out laughing before pinching my nose gently. My apologies for the terrible misunderstanding, sweetie. I was at the optician to see if I needed glasses, and I was petrified. Why are you crying? I'm going to be getting glasses. And? I don't want to wear glasses. Why? Because I don't want to be called four-eyed on the first day of school. Jeez, that's all you're worrying about? Don't be meaning about it. Fine, I'm sorry. You don't, <laughs> you don't mean it. No, not really, no. Ah. Hey, look at me. If you get glasses, you can get one with cool colors like mine. Red? Green is cooler. And get green class glasses, smarty pants. But if you get red glasses, we can be twins. That would be even cooler, right? I guess so. See, there's nothing to be scared of. You were pretty immature, but I admire your kindness and bravery. You were like a little role model to me as a child. Did we ever play together as kids? Nope. Girls play with girls, and boys play with boys back then. But we were partnered together in the reading buddies a few times. You were such a show off wanting to read all the pages yourself. But that was about until high school where I asked you the prom very awkwardly. What did you say? Nothing. I just wrote you a card pouring all my feelings into it. I think I said you were cute as a kitten in it. I still remember the cringing expression you made looking at it. But you still accept it. You're quite the cat person, so perhaps that's why. Oh, did I have any kitties? Well, you used to have a cat named Mint called Mittens. A family pet, I think. Used to. He passed away before the accident. Oh. When did I dye my hair blonde? Your ex friend sent me to convince you to get your hair dyed at the salon or something. His voice dropped the whimsical tone as he said that. To me, I like your white hair more. It makes you unique. He stroked my hair gently. 
You were always a marvelous dancer. Really? Oh yes, you took ballet when you were small. But you became interested in other forms of dance over the years. But even as the years passed, you were so elegant and graceful when you danced. I couldn't take my eyes off you. I woke up the very next, very late the next day. The clam was gone. Clam? I sat up and noticed a piece of paper on the table by the, on the table by the flowers. Hi, sweetheart. If you're reading this, I'm going to work. Sorry for not waking you to say goodbye, but you were so cute when you were asleep. You didn't have the heart to do it. He has small hearts at the end of that line. But if you want, you can come see me on my lunch break around 1.30 p.m. The keys to the house are by the door, but be sure not to lose them if you do come out. It was just too sweet sometimes. My heart, too sweet for even my sweet tooth. It was already 1.30, so when I looked at the clock, crumbs, I don't think I'll make it in time. But he's technically giving you permission to go out. You could check out the bakery, maybe buy him some lunch from there. You're right, Bruce. 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 Yes, I pretend to have conversations with my teddy. Listen, who else was I going to talk to? After getting dressed, I, over I went out to town again. As I predicted, the clan's lunch break was over. So I resorted to entering to talk to him during work hours. Sweetheart, you're a little late. My lunch break just finished. I know, but I want to give you a goodbye kiss. Thank you, darling. I was quickly hurried out by the farm out of the pharmacy. I decided to go to the park. I saw the blonde woman I met yesterday. She was with a group of people, people doing some form of dance, kind of music coming from a small CD player. That looks fun. Maybe I should join them to warm up on my dancing skills. Maybe you practice at home first. True. I ended up watching the blonde girl and one of the others dancing for a while longer, sitting in the grass under a tree. It's hard to see. Maybe take off her glasses? Maybe they're causing a glare from the sun. Or I'll quickly take them off. The blonde maiden's dance became even more vivid. She's so talented and pretty. When I finally did arrive home, I tried dancing to some music on the TV. But... It didn't go very well. I don't get it. The ballerinas on the TV made it look so easy. And I'm not breaking a sweat. My toes hurt now. Honey, what are you up to? Crumbs. Hi, the clan. I was just practicing ballet. Is that your point, point shoes? You'll get hurt. you hurt yourself, silly. I already have. Aw, oh, come here, sweetheart. Clan took the remote and changed the channel. We played soft piano music with some string instruments accompanying it. If you want to dance, we can dance like we did for the slow step back. I promise if you like. I actually like that a lot. I'm sorry, I think I stepped on your toe again. Don't worry about it, darling. I'm enjoying this regardless. Are you having fun? Not as much as I thought I would. My toes are still sore. Here. Scoop me up and place me on the couch. You would take a little rest and I'll put on some dinner. I'll put on some dinner. I got a friend of mine to pick us up some treats from the bakery for dessert. The what? Oh, did the amnesia affect that too? Well, the bakery is where you buy baked goods, like bread and cakes. Oh, the bakery. It, is that what you've been calling it this entire time? Yes. It felt so stupid. We had spicy shrimp and rice that night. I hate spice. I tried as hard as I could, could to not gag in front of him. I managed to stomach half of my plate and I lied saying I wasn't very hungry. Oh, that's a pity. I'll save the cup rice for us to have tomorrow then. As the night fell once more, I found myself in the clan's bed again, but I couldn't sleep this time. Clan? Mm hmm? Yes? What else do you like about me? Sorry for my dancing and reading. Why do you ask? Is something upsetting you? I just... I'm just disappointed in myself for not being the girl you remember me for. Ah, oh, sweetheart, don't say things like that. But it's true. I just feel so stupid, calling the bakery the wrong name. Dancing on my toes with my pointy shoes and hurting myself, crashing the car. I felt the clans immediately hug me from behind. His voice became hushed. My sweet Lucy, that wasn't your fault. But I was the one dragging, wasn't I? I could hear the lump in his throat as he swallowed. 
Yes, you were, but it was an accident. How? Was I stupid and look off the road? Was I stupid and dr have drunk alcohol before driving? No, darling, no. Let's just stop living these awful memories. You hear the sounds of him sniffling, trying to hold back tears. I started to cry too. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. What are you doing? I found this wire and I wanted to make it into a headband like the one that my avatar wears in Wildlife Bridge, Refreshed Realms. How are you gonna do that? Decorate with pretty flowers I made out of paper, tie them on, then fit them on my head. It will look so pretty. As I continued this task, I began to sing to myself. I became so distracted by the mindless lark. I didn't even really notice the plants listening from the corridor. My my sweetheart, I didn't know you could sing. Your voice is beautiful. Thank you, Declan. What's this? I'm making the headband my avatar works in my game. Oh, that's adorable, darling. Thank you. And also... Declan held a cupcake up to my nose. I inhaled the sweet aroma and dropped the wire. Gimme. What do you say? Pretty please? Cupcakes for breakfast? Not complaining. I waited the tent once again and peeking in the window at the boutique. Um, excuse me. Hmm? Hi, this is a weird question, but can I ask you a favor? Um, sure. Can you pick up these prescribed medications for me from the pharmacy? I'm too scared to go in. Oh, of course. Without thinking, I walked into the pharmacy with a little doctor's note for a straight up to the clan. Hi, the clan. I need your help. Oh, what is it? Pretty bond lady across the street was too scared to come in, but she wants these medications. I hand him the note. The clan skimmed the note, occasionally shifting his stare to the girl outside the window. When I turned to look, she was staring back, biting her nails anxiously. Well, pretty isn't the word I use, but I'll see if I can find all these. The clan disappeared into the staff only quarters of the pharmacy for a few minutes. Once he returned, he had a handful of medications. We didn't have some of the exact ones, but these are pretty much the same thing. Oh, thank you. I left the little boxes of medication and ran off to the girl again. Here you go. These don't look right. Are you sure you give me the right ones? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll see when I get home. She takes them in her hands and begins to leave. Thank you anyways. No problem, miss. I don't know your name. It's Lucy. What? But she was already gone. Alright, there we go. He placed my homemade headband in my hair. Oh, sweetheart, you look beautiful. Thank you, my love. So, will we start the vows? The vows? What? The vows? Hmm? It was already night. Nothing official, but it was enough for us. While the clan was quoting everything that I assumed was said at my wedding, my mind was racing. I didn't understand. Did he mix me up with someone else? Has he been truthful with me? Why is he... In sickness and in health, until death do us part. Huh? You say I do, silly. Oh, I do. I... It didn't feel like I meant it. I didn't deserve him. I don't deserve him. I'm not good enough. Everything he loves about me, I'm... I'm nothing like that. I don't know what I am. Clan took my face. He drew me closer to him. Pressed his lips against mine. Romance movies always make it seem like the most exhilarating feeling to share with a true love. But it felt so empty. Clan whispered in a low voice. Her lips are so cold, my dear. What? She's not real. That means because she's always saying she's cold. May I warm you up? That night, we did stuff. I don't know how to describe it, but I still felt cold and empty. I didn't know if the love he expressed for me was expressed was for me or for another woman. Did he know me at all? Good and he loves me, right? Hey, okay, here we have the last option for the pen. Let's leave this 
自己。皮肤的温顺是很好。Um, the shutter gun and screwdriver while I was out. Now I have my bowl of lucky jewels and toasted chocolate spread. Yummy! It was yummy. Finished up and cleaned up my mess before checking to see how the car was doing. Driver, on the way to his room, I came up with a perfect idea. I can make him a bit well fly from my fancy pen. I began to rummage through some drawers to find paper. Oh, I found neatly folded paper and opened it. What the? Something? Something? Give up soul to something, something grass fellow, something something side. The clan. I merely skimmed through it, but I read enough to understand that the clan is something irrational. Is it because of the car accident? Did I die and get resurrected? Is it the death issues? I, I have to erase his name. What? Without thinking, I began to roughly brush the ink uh, eraser across the paper. But as soon as the pen was scanned, nothing was removing the clan's signature. I was so absorbed in the pointless endeavor that I didn't notice a claw-like hand reaching for mine. Ah! Uh -huh. I scat, snatching my hand, holding my pen. Entity made her presence known. With it, made her anger known. Who are you? How did you get in here? Page. Page. Page Galatia Graspellow. And you, little lady. She lifted me by my arm, my feet dangling off the ground. Our nosy pest, aren't you? No, I was just trying to help. Help with what? Cheating me out of a cocktail? Pardon? Ooh, silly me. He wouldn't have told you. Smiling somewhat sweetly, the woman gently sat me down on the ground. I took the time to examine her appearance. While unnerving, she was rather scary than I perceived. Apologies, dearie. If I make it up to you, I'll explain to you with respect and curiosity. Um, okay. A million questions ran through my head. Can I ask only one question? Yes. There. Question answered. Wait, what? <laughs> only one question? I, uh... Blue threw her head back to laugh, snorting a little. Oh, that's simply too cute. She went down to my eye level while petting my hair. I'm teasing, dearie. Ask as many questions as you want. Oh. Well, thank you. But perhaps we should take this to another room. Your boy toy might hear us. My what? Your boyfriend. I meant boyfriend. Oh, sorry. Paige ushered me into the kitchen and sat down. All right. So first, what exactly are you? A demon, darling. A what? A demon. Um, H E double hostage hockey sticks. What? Has he told you anything? You mean the clan? Yeah. Where has he told you? Um, he's told me pretty much everything I know. I see. You go outside. Only once this morning, but the clan doesn't need to know. Why is that? To worry about me. I see no reason you should worry. I sculpt my human lip because I'll own the best materials. You're still in marvelous condition. I don't know what sculpting has to do with anything, but the clan worries I'll get hurt because. Because what? Because I have amnesia. You don't. What? Apologies. I mean, I know that wasn't a question, but I simply couldn't resist. Page snorted back a chuckle. This makes my it's making my head hurt. Sorry, sorry. Tell you what, I'll just explain everything that I know, and you ask questions afterward. Sound good? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm a demon. Demons are powerful creatures from H.E. Double Hockey Sticks. It's a place you go if you're a bad person. My husband Simon and I were lounging around. We drink souls of the damn blood alcohol. Simon sent something. No, sent something. A familiar thing of a ritual being performed. The NHE double hockey sticks. Unless you have specific rituals set for you, humans will rush to be the first to answer a random ritual's call. But this isn't even my darling's first rodeo. Find this client seamlessly. The rituals were performed by your little boyfriend, using blood from very delicate parts of the body. I'm surprised he was still alive. He said he wished for a way to turn back the clock, bring his beloved Lucy back to him. Now there are demons that can do stuff like that, but Simon and I are not one of them. Still eager to please the client, Simon ever so nicely asked me to put my sculpting skills to some extra special special use. I began uh, began sculpting a replica. That replica being. 
cheek of my nose. You! Pardon? You are a, a sculptor who planned your boyfriend's ex-girlfriend. If you've been out and about, I'm sure you've seen her. I wish that the blonde girl from the supermarket came back to me, but... I wouldn't do that. Pardon? I don't want to just replace the person he loves. I don't know how else to tell you, dearie, but he did. Granted, I didn't ask many questions outside of what this Lucy girl looked like. Well, I know she passed away. Yeah, that has to be it. The first Lucy passed away, maybe in a car accident? Clown was lonely and wanted to bring her back somehow, surely. I have another question. Well, ask away. Is the clown going to eat you double hockey sticks when he dies? So like his was going there regardless, but his soul will be our property. Regardless, property. One at a time, dearie. Clown is too kind to be going anywhere for bad people. Trust me, darling, when he gets down there, his soul will make a spicy cocktail. What? Souls that are damned for H.E. double hockey sticks are spicy. Meanwhile, innocent souls that are destined for paradise, after death, if we hide into fear, have the taste of the sweetest nectar. A patient came to talk, so we began to tune her out. So many incomprehensible questions were buzzing in my brain. Your naivety is simply adorable, dearie. Paige patted my head before disappearing with a snap of her fingers. That night, I had a horrifying dream. I was in the dark, being held by something, something warm. Too warm, smothering. A harsh blinding light snapped on, revealing close surroundings. I was in a small dress, neglecting to shield my skin from the cold air. My hair was pulled back in a style that felt like he was inking at the roots of my head. So, shall we dance? I opened my mouth to speak, but no words came out. My throat felt dry, no moisture like clay. Without a response, I was pulled into a dance. My feet felt like they were being pressed against last shards with each step. Everything hurt so much. I liked the figure dancing with me, hoping for some form of comfort. Past his shoulder, I saw her. Enjoying the party, dearie? Paige, I thought you went home. It's never a party without me, darling. It's a drab here at this... What is it called? Prom? I, I don't know. Paige didn't acknowledge me anymore, picking up a glass filled with a foreign substance. As well as another glass filled with a water-like liquid with a tint of blue. My mind is certainly cold in here. How does a nice warm drink sound? Paige appeared in front of me, pouring the thick orange substance down my throat. It burned. I coughed. I gagged. What the puke? I looked up to her. She was drinking the blue fluid, so a distant grin on her face. Paige stepped aside to reveal my dance partner. I stay back. I was awoken from the dream by a harsh banging on the window. What the? Hello, dear me. Paige was outside my window. It's 2 p.m. Don't you want to buy a batch of cupcakes? Uh, wouldn't you kind of be upset? Do you forget he's gone to work today? How do you know this stuff? Simon and I have the rights to his soul. You know what that cocktail is doing all the time. Please don't call me that. Fine, but do get dressed. I want to take you with me for a sweet treat. Why? You're adorable, and as your mother and I now have emotionally attached. What? Mother? Well, technically, yeah. After finally getting dressed, I looked at Paige. Um, maybe wear a hat? Oh, don't be silly, darling. Poof, I'm a human now. Okay, never mind. Okay, this has turned uh, drastic. Thank you, Mr. Bakari. Her page went from behind me, but she didn't say anything. You're quite welcome, Lucy. And my I ask, who's your friend there? Uh, I didn't know what Paige would want me to say, so I just looked at her. It's Paige, I'm new around here. She grinned a toothy grin. We'll see if it haunts in tonight's nightmares. Why? You look just like that page woman that disappeared a few years, years back. Paige grimaced. No, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. But you do. You have the same outfit as her missing poster, too. Wait, what? Okay, uh, let's get out of here at a fast pace immediately. Uh, that's weird. As Paige took my hand and grabbed a paper bag of cupcakes, two of us ventured into the park. Oh, look at that, Lucy. A little dance club. Oh? Looking to my page, I pointed. I saw the blonde woman I met yesterday. 
So there's a group of people doing some form of dance music coming from a small CD player. That looks fun. You should join. Wait. Hmm? What is it, dearie? I, I don't really like dancing in front of people. What if I look silly? Darling, look. Before I became a demon, I was an alcoholic and drug user. So I have symptoms of it and H-E-L-L hockey sticks. To this day, I put my husband down there while off my rockers and while I don't recommend drugs as dying from them wasn't fun, Simon and I bonded over just how much of a party animal I was, by contrast to his upper class attitude. What are you trying to tell me? That acting a little shy is fine if you never announce to having a fun time. You don't have to dance if you don't want to, but I think we both really enjoyed it. I guess I never really thought of it that way. Okay, I'll join in. <laughs> They're really having the time of their life. I have no idea what I was worried about. Compared to Paige's dancing, I looked like a graceful figure skater. Paige went absolutely bonkers and it was so much fun. I've never seen you two around town before. Oh, well, we're newbies. The name's Paige. Cindy? And you? Lucy. What a coincidence. My girlfriend's name is also Lucy. She's alive? I swore I saw her earlier. Where's she went off to? Gone to grab some snacks from the bakery. She'll be back soon. Gone to Paige's arm and whispered to her. Can we go home now? Home? But we just got outside. Please? Oh, very well. Before you go, we have a karaoke night tomorrow if you'd like to come. You had me up before. Karaoke, but I can't sing. What did I say about fun? Okay. The rest of the evening went by in a blur. Paige and I placed some wildlife br uh, bridge with rest realms before she had to sneak off as the clan returned home. You seem distressed, sweetheart. I, I missed you a lot. Ah, oh, my poor darling. I made spicy shrimp and rice for dinner. I hate spice so much. I only managed to swallow a few bites, then lie saying I was full. I wish we would finally tell him that we hate it. When I went to bed, I found the bag of cupcakes Paige and I bought sitting on my bed with a little sticky note. I'll be back to doll you up for karaoke at about 3 p.m., dearie. I dotted the, no the note with small X's. I satisfied my hunger with a few cupcakes before I went to bed. I had another nightmare that night. I dreamt I was in a dark room, lights occasionally flashing and glaring down at me. I was with Cindy, she seemed to be having fun. I tried to tell her that I felt scared, but my throat was dried out again. It burned to swallow my own saliva. I felt a cold presence against my back, like someone had placed ice cubes in my bare back. But as the cold dripped down my spine and it felt prickly, sore, burning through the freezing sensation. I turned around and I could see the monster from my nightmare the previous night, staring at me. Why? Why are you staring at me like that? Are you going to hurt me? A hand emerged from the darkness, grasping the end of my dress. Only then did I notice how short it was. I felt ashamed. I woke up, feeling oddly guilty. Did I lose a pet recently? I never had a pet. Hmm, that's odd. I saw a shallow looking grave outside in the front garden this morning. I suppose it's been there for some time. I'm sure it's nothing. Perhaps. My mind certainly kept you in better condition than most of my rifle class. He has? Why yes, your hair is still so soft and easy to sculpt to a different style. Like Play-Doh. Interesting. Alright, and done. Paige helped me in front of the mirror. Oh, and take those off, darling. She snatched my glasses. I didn't sculpt you to have any issues with your lovely eyes. I don't need them? Of course not. But the clan said, is a clan an optician? No. Are you sure? Cheeky, darling. She took on my chin gently. But really, how do you like your hair? It's lovely. Because I got to carry open while the clan kind of slept. The clan's gonna worry about me if he finds out. You'll be all in safer with me than him, dearie. Remember, I sculpted you. I don't think that's how it works. You say tomato, I say pomegranate. That's not how the saying goes. Paige, Lucy, you made it. Indeed, can't pass up a night of fun out. Cindy Google before looking really awkwardly. Hey, I have an odd question to ask, that being. I kinda wanna sing, but I'm getting the stage fright. 
how many of you joined me? My Lucy isn't here yet. Um, even, and even if she was, her singing is a little flat. Please don't tell her I said that. My song is on in just a few minutes. Please don't dare that in. But I... Fun, dearie. Fun. Fun, 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 fun. I'll do it. Thank you so much. Oh god, this was a mistake. I'm scared. Don't worry, I'll sing the main tune and you copy. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. Instrumental began to play, my throat felt dry. Then he began the leading notes. I opened my mouth and my voice cracked. Oh god, I can't do it, I can't. Looked out and saw Paige giving me a very aggressive thumbs up. Fun, fun, fun. Look how she's our wingman. Oh, I didn't see that. Hold back. Okay. Oh, the same sequence. Okay, let's get ready. Lovely. Darling, your voice is... Your voice was lovely. You mean it? I can't sing my ass. You did amazing. 100% agreed. Huh? Lucy. Hi. How are you doing? Not the best, honestly. Aw, why? Well, Mr. Fallon asked about me yesterday, and it kind of made me relive stuff as I tried to explain why he... Who's Mittens? Oh, my cat, um, my asshole, the next killed him. He killed the cat. Oh my god, he deserves to die. X. Oh yeah, I should give you a warning since you're new. The dude in the pharmacy with blonde hair and glasses. Bad news, stay far away from him. The clan? You know his name? Uh. We had to pop into the pharmacy to get meds a few days ago. We happened to run into him there. Right, well, stay far away from him. It's all or nothing with him. What has he done? Well, to start, he smashed my car when I tried to leave him the first time, locked me in the house when I wanted to see Cindy, and sent me death threats when she came at us by. When I managed to sneak out the window one day, he... A blonde maiden covered her mouth as Cindy pulled her in for a hug. He what? What did he do? Maybe we should go outside, give her some air. He followed Paige's advice, bringing the girl outside. Please, tell me what he did. In your own time. Paige added to amass my desperation. I wanted to know. I needed to know. Through some light slob sobs, the blonde woman opened her mouth to speak. I I don't know what happened, but I came home. My poor cat, Mittens, found him curled up in the corner of the room with a massive gnash on the side of his head. That monster, he threw him. He threw him as hard as he could. She took a deep breath while Cindy cuddled her, stroking her hair. Stay far away from that guy, understand? Understood. We actually need to go early. Take care of yourselves, you two. Aw, goodbye. Bye-bye. Come along, dearie. 
here. You gotta go right. I begin to run. What the? Deary, where are you going? I sprinted home, biting back tears. Clan couldn't have harmed Mittens. He wouldn't. I began frantically searching for the grave page I mentioned. Where, where, where? Where what, dearie? The grave? Where's the grave you saw? Near the garden chair. I dug the loose dirt up with my bare hands. Her nails felt like as if they were peeling off. No, please. Oh my god. He really did it. The partially decomposed cat still had blood staining it previously white fur. While having streamed down from its little head. Okay, I... What happened to the chair's leg? The leg? I looked up. The leg of the garden chair was slightly bent and seemingly snapped in half. Where's the rest of it? Over here. Huh? It was kind of sticking out of the car window. How have I not seen that before? Was I really so blind? No, 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 no. Theory? He couldn't have. Why would he? How could he? I theorized he was highly abusive to the real Lucy and wanted a copycat version of her that I could mold to how he wanted it to be. But he's so sweet to me. Probably let that threat and kill me a cat don't really coax the woman into staying with him. I... I... No. No, no, no. Everything went black after that. What the? Sweetheart? What are you doing out here? My poor dear, you'll catch a cold. How did you even... Let's get you inside. I had many nightmares that night. They began with the blonde maiden. She was drumming out of the house. It was raining. The monster trailed behind her. She screamed in fury at the creature. It roared back. The blonde woman, no. Lucy reached for the door of her car. Ah! She screamed in terror at this as the garden chair was thrown in front of the window of her car. Glass flew in multiple directions, almost piercing her skin. Why wasn't he arrested? Lucy froze in terror as she felt the monster place his claws on her shoulders, gently caressing her skin. Let's get you inside, shall we? With a flash, I saw Lucy sitting in my bed, her bed. She looked through her phone, which the screen of hers was also cracked. She was tense, frequently looking through an open crack in the door. She held up the phone to her ear. Cindy, I need to feed her. There was another flash. Lucy was entering the house. There was a look of disdain on her face. She carried a large bag. She looked around, presumably for the monster. Oh my god. But instead, she found the limp, lifeless, and blood-drenched body of her old cat, Mittens. <laughs> no, 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 no. The monster entered the room. Lucy glared at him, fury filled her and filling her eyes. How dare you? I opened my eyes. The room was silent. I glanced over to the door. It was wide open. Clan? Hmm? He entered the room with a small tray in his hands. What is it, sweetheart? What happened? Well, I found you outside, late at night. You poor dear. You look so cold, fast asleep on the dirty ground. He reached out to pet my face. I shuddered under his touch. What's the matter, sweetheart? Why was there a dead cat outside? I knew the answer. I don't know why I asked. Cling to some hope that he would be truthful, maybe? Dead cat? He must have had a nightmare, Lucy. No, I know what I saw. I know you think you saw something awful, but it's fine now. The nightmare is over. He tried to pull me in for a hug. I'm here now, Lucy. Stop calling me that. Pardon? Stop calling me by her name. Her. Stop calling me by the name of the girl you hurt. How dare you lie, lie to me? I never ever lied to you. I never crashed your car. You smashed it to scare her from running away. You told me I crashed it so you can make yourself out as my dashing prince. Sweetheart, tell me, who has planted these ludicrous stories in your head? Then I chuckled, but did not hold the same sweetness as his other laughs. This was condescending. My poor little Lucy, being fed such silly stories you don't even know any better. My little dear. He forced me into a hug. But it's okay, my sweet. You'll stay with me, and I'll take your good care of you until you come to your senses. Maybe. His grip, grip tightens. You're going to sneak out behind my back and break my trust. I shoved him away as hard as I could. 
He kind of banged his head off the wall, yelled out in pain. He glared at me. In his eyes, I didn't see the man who took care of me for all my short life. I saw the monster of my nightmares. I ran, I ran as fast as I could. I had to get away. I had to free myself before he harmed me. I cried out. Paige, Paige, please help me. But there was no reply. Reach for the door handle, but to die in my dismay, it was locked. He was nowhere in sight. Paige? That was a demon's wife, was it not? I felt a blunt force against my head. I woke up in a room that I had never seen before. There was dry blood stains on the wooden floor. I noticed that there was a painted circle above around me. What the? I risked my life for you, dear. Clan, I poured my blood into this for you. I took great care to teach you everything you needed to know. I was gentle and kind to your tender vessel. Careful to not faint taint your loveliness. You think I didn't need to know what horrible things you did to the woman you tried to have be your place? Of course not. We were never supposed to leave this place anyways. The world outside is bleak and harmful. It heightens the paranoia of inevitable harm. Only one is for, was for you, Lucy. I'd have you to stay where I could keep you safe. A relationship is built upon trust, is it not? I couldn't even trust you outside of my own front door. What are you planning to do now? I'm going to nip your behavior in the bud. He shoved me to the ground, a knife in his hand. The damn sculpture stuck her nose and stuff that wasn't her concern. Now, let's see how she feels having her little project torn to itty bitty pieces. Wait, please, if I'm dead then, would you be alone? Dead? Huh. <laughs> you think I'd make a deal with a demon cutting my throat in the process just to have a clay figure that dies like a normal human? Oh no, sweetheart, you won't die, but you'll feel everything. Maybe I can keep those gorgeous eyes in the jar. I will admit, I prefer them over hers. I'll keep them where the only thing you can look at is me. I love you. Let us begin. Oh my god. I stuck the knife directly in the middle of my eyes. There was no blood. It was the most excruciating pain I've ever experienced. I shrieked in agony. It only made it worse. I kind of began to twist the knife into my skin. It felt like my eyes were about to pop out. What was mere seconds felt like an eternity. The die eternity continually seized as an all too familiar figure appeared from thin air. I wouldn't worry so much about my feelings if I were you. Her claw like hands grabbed the clan by the hair and yanked him off of, off of me. Because what I'm going to do to you is what you should worry about. What the? How did you get in here? Some appreciation, duh. But you can hurt me. You made a deal that I can use a replica as I please. Correction, Simon, you made the deal. I was just being a generous spouse, saving him some labor. And believe me, honey, I hate when my hard work is ruthlessly disrespected. Paige looked at me. Dearie, do shut your eyes for me. This part isn't for you. She didn't have to ask me twice. I felt so lightheaded. As my eyes closed, I slipped off into dreams again. This time, I had a sweet dream. A dream in which I was on the wooden stage again, singing songs. It was more so of an image rather than a dream in motion. I suddenly heard the sound of Paige and another voice discussing something. I'm not quite sure. We never really discuss kids, dear. But honey, look how cute she is. In a few tweaks, she could easily pass for our kind. Besides, what else does our little theory have to go? Well, I... And what did you do for me when I had nowhere to go? Well, alright. I'll see. What? Oh, my dearie, you're finally awake. Paige? Apologies, I didn't realize how badly that creature had hurt you. Creature? What happened to the clan? Let's just say who will make a lovely welcome decoration to whoever checks the house after he stops turning up to work. But enough about him, dearie. I have something exciting to tell you. That being... Salutations, Lucy. I am Sir Simon Grassbellow. I believe my wife has mentioned me to you. She has? Well, they just convinced me that you can, uh, well, um, live as our daughter down here in H-E double, double hockey sticks. That's what you've been telling her, hell is. It's funny, honey. Live here? That's right. 
Now, I've learned how to tweak your body a teeny bit so that I can pass for someone that died and transformed into a demonic entity, but it will be nothing that harms your delicate little face. Will I be safe here? With Simon and I as your parents, you'll have nothing to worry about. And so, here I am, the daughter of two demons, how this story unfolded. So, Cat. How do you like your new look? I love it. Thank you, Mom. Marvelous. So, shall we go visit the party guest? We shall. Drew and I am Cat. Oh, that was so sweet. We were playing Wish the Uplings took out the other roots. Aw. Alright. And that is the end of I Am Copycat. So he did conjure up a new her, but like he made like a deal, basically. So he can mold her into his own little being. I wonder why he wasn't arrested though. He was clearly insane. I can't believe the lamb keep working at the pharmacy, but honestly that is how the real world works to just let people like that 